Welcome to Lisbon. from beautiful, sunny Lisbon, Portugal. So I am here for two days with my friend Aisha. We're gonna be exploring all around Lisbon. This was our first stop on our Portugal trip. We're gonna be in Lisbon, Sintra, and Porto. So follow along, I will have multiple vlogs for all of those locations. And we're currently on day two. So I'm gonna roll you guys back to when we first arrived yesterday and share with you all some ideas of things you can do if you only have a short period of time in Lisbon. So follow along and let's get this Portugal adventure started, shall we? First thing we did before even leaving the airport was pick up our Lisbon cards. This is a must when visiting Lisbon because it gives you free access to the public transportation in the city, including the trams. You can also use it to take the train to nearby Sintra and Cascais, and it also gives free or discounted access to 39 different museums and attractions in the city. Lisbon is one of Europe's oldest cities filled with beautiful tiles, historic buildings, and lively culture, and I was so excited to explore this city for the first time. Our first stop was to Bistro 4 for lunch. This was at the nearby sister hotel of our hotel, which our room wasn't quite ready for check-in. So we popped over here and just had the most peaceful and delicious lunch out on their patio. During our stay in Lisbon, we were hosted by the Porto Bay Marques, a four-star hotel that's just steps away from the Avenida da Liberdade, Lisbon's famed luxury shopping district, and a short distance from the historic center of the city. So we just got settled in our hotel, trying to revive ourselves and freshen up to go out and venture out, but the jet lag is real. I'm having some major brain fog right now. We stayed in their junior suite, which is actually so perfect for two people traveling together. We had plenty of room having a separate bedroom with this lovely little balcony. The bathroom was on the smaller side, but pretty standard, I would say. But what was great about this for the two of us was it had another separate little sitting area, living room space with a dedicated workspace. The hotel also has a really great rooftop bar with a beautiful view, a plunge pool, and a gym. It's also a very short walk to the metro station, which their metro system was so easy to use. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. jumped on the metro and we are here at the Carmo convent. This is an archaeological museum but it used to be a convent here in Lisbon. It was destroyed by the huge earthquake that happened here in the 1700s and instead of restoring it or rebuilding it they decided to leave it as it is. So you can go in and take uh, your own little self-guided tour. It's a small little museum and you can see the ruins. If you have the Lisbon card you get a discount and it's four euros to enter. So definitely picking up all the perks of the Lisbon card already. The ruined Carmo convent is one of Lisbon's most hauntingly beautiful sites. It was its greatest medieval building, but stands as a reminder of the devastating earthquake of 1755 that destroyed most of the city. The Archaeological Museum presents an eclectic collection that was donated by archaeologists in the 17th century. Among the items on display from Portugal and beyond are the Roman sarcophagus of the Muses, the tombs of King Ferdinand I and Queen Maria Anna of Austria, an Egyptian mummy, and a couple South American mummies, which I'm not gonna show you because they were pretty creepy. Came to the top of, can you pronounce Boca this Boca de something something. It's gonna be right here. <laughs> This is the place where you can come and get pictures with the famous tram that runs up this very steep hill. So keep in mind there are two. So you arrive, you may see the one that has graffiti all over it, but do not worry. 
there's another one that is clean in the white and yellow um, that comes to the top and depending on what time you come it could leave pretty fast. <laughs> yeah we just like went and grabbed pictures in front of it really fast and she was like trying to pose and it's like oh nope never mind bye. <laughs> As I was putting my foot up against it so it was very no warning. Yeah. But um, it seems like they come up and down pretty fast, so we're just gonna relax for a second. We've been walking a lot already. Yeah. It is a Monday, so I feel like if you were to do this on the weekend, it would probably be a lot crazier. So. If you're coming here to grab a photo with the elevator, Dabika, just be aware there's gonna be quite a few other people around waiting to do exactly the same thing. We got some really cute shots outside of it and then decided to ride it down to the bottom. This is fun. <laughs> Super fun. <laughs> Definitely a better way to get up and down the hills. If you get the Lisbon card, like I told you, this ride will be free. And I would recommend riding it from the top and going down. The line to ride it up is long. Since we were nearby, we popped into the Timeout Market, which is a modern Portuguese food hall with over two dozen food stalls representing some of the country's best chefs. Wow. <laughs> we weren't hungry and also didn't want to spoil our appetite for our dinner coming up, but here are some stalls I've heard are a must try. Not too far away from the timeout market, you'll find the Pink Street, which is another little famous Instagram spot. The street is painted pink, and above there are these really colorful rainbow umbrellas that are hanging. There's a bunch of really cute little cafes down this street as well, so just a fun place to pop by and grab a quick fun photo. Of course, when you're in Lisbon, you have to try Jinjinha, which is a sour cherry liqueur that's very typical here. We tried the, the, the gin, ginger, the, the cherry ginger, I don't know, I, I can't speak Portuguese, but it wasn't bad. We hated it, clearly. And then you get cherries on the bottom. tripping out just looking at the ground here. We earned our dinner today, that's for sure. We've been walking a lot. We're here at Kira, the Four Seasons, for a delicious tasting menu, so excited. Kira is helmed by Michelin-starred chef Pedro Pena Bastos, who selects, or rather curates, his ingredients from Lisbon's rich regional offerings to create a symphony of flavors. Having dinner at Kira is definitely something I will not forget, and it truly is an entire culinary experience. We went for their 13 course dinner option, but you can also get the shorter version, which is about seven courses. And we also went with the wine pairing, which I highly recommend doing because they paired the wines so wonderful and we learned so much about Portuguese wine. They also have a vegetarian option as well if you do not eat meat. But every course and all the wines were truly incredible. The one course that was interesting was this pigeon that they brought out for us. I can't say I'd ever eaten pigeon before tonight. It kind of tastes like pork. Yeah? Pork. And chicken. But it doesn't taste bad. Okay, I have hope. I think it's just still the fault that it's big. decided to start our day in Praca de Marcio, which is Lisbon's main square. This is actually the place where 
the royal palace was built until it was destroyed in the earthquake in 1755. Definitely a great spot for people watching or just taking in the beautiful architecture and the view of the river. couldn't help but look down all the time. The beautiful limestone mosaic style sidewalks they have throughout Lisbon are just so beautiful. They are a little slippery though, so just wear some sneakers with good traction. After a short walk, we found ourselves at the Lisbon Cathedral. If you have the Lisbon card, you can enter the cathedral for a discounted price. It was such a great way to cool off and beat the heat. It's a stunning church and it's so interesting because it was built in the 1100s and has actually survived many earthquakes. It's been declared a national monument since 1910. not a trip to Europe if I'm not going up to the top of some church. It is time to go get some food. I'd read that Confiteria Nacional was a good little place to find Lisbon's famous pastry, the pastis de nada. While it's not the original, it still is delicious and a great spot if you have a craving for something sweet because they have so many delicious pastries here. This bakery has been around since 1829 and it was the official confectioner of the royal family. They've also got a little dining room area upstairs where you can go if you'd like to order some lunch. They had a nice menu serving sort of some typical Portuguese dishes and some salads. Everything was delish. Try the famous pastis de nada custard tart that you have to try when you're anywhere in Portugal, but definitely in Lisbon. So we figured we'd come and have a bougie little lunch and try it out. It was really good. Very flaky, buttery crust. We just got finished lunch. It was yep. so good. It originally was supposed to be brunch breakfast with tea and then it just turned to lunch. We are gonna go up there now. See it? Oh Jesus. Wait, what? Oh, it's a transit, right? We're not walking all the way up there. <laughs> I think there's a way to get up there. It better be because, you know, that seems like a hike. <laughs> Jess is trying to kill me. Um, now I'm trying to navigate. Jess is sitting here trying to get her navigation. 
together. As we were headed to St. George's Castle, which was way up on the hill, the only way to get to it is to hike or take Tram 28 or Tram 11, which neither of them will get you right next to the castle, but they'll definitely get you up the worst part of the hill and closer to your destination. There was a long line to get on this tram, so if you're coming in the summer, just be prepared. If you want to ride Tram 28, you may have to wait for a little bit. But we really enjoyed the little ride on this cable car, even if it didn't quite get us to our destination very fast. Following the sign this time, I was following Google Maps. So good for the back entry. <laughs> So unfortunately we trekked all the way up to the top of this hill only to find that the line to go into this castle was so long and we really only had an hour before we needed to be back down by the water to do our boat tour. So here's some beautiful drone footage of St. George's Castle but I highly recommend giving yourself a half day to just get up there and see it. I hear that the view from up here is incredible and especially at sunset you just cannot beat just the view of the water with the sunset over it. So maybe try to plan to come up here to see that and let me know in the comments if you do and what the view was like because I never really got to see it. We had to rush back down so that we could make sure to catch our boat tour in time. One of the best ways to see the city of Lisbon is actually via the river. You can see so much. So we headed down to the harbor to get on a Lisbon by boat tour. When you get to the harbor, you can check out this amazing monument to the discoveries, which commemorates all the Portuguese explorers. That's going to go on a little two hour cruise of Lisbon by boat. It's a really pretty day, so it should be really nice. We're on our two-hour cruise on the river. It's very peaceful, but you get a really pretty view of Lisbon, um, both sides of Lisbon, this other side and the other side of the river that we haven't even gotten to explore and probably won't get to on this trip so it's really really nice. This little cruise was definitely a great way for us to see some things like the Bellum Tower that we just weren't going to have enough time to actually go visit and for 38 euros a person a pretty good value considering you get a nice relaxing two-hour sail as well as a glass of wine and some Portuguese snacks. Did you figure it out? Yeah. I like it. Wind blown. They do have blankets for you, so that's nice. We definitely would have been frozen if they didn't have that. I'm still freezing. We're not, we were not prepared for jackets, but bring a jacket, maybe. It gets windy. Bring your sunglasses, even if it's not sunny. Yeah. <laughs> For dinner, we took a short walk from our hotel to one of Lisbon's trendiest rooftop bars, the Sky Bar Lisboa by Scene. This is such a cool and eclectic and very chic space that I highly recommend you check out if you love yourself a good rooftop bar and craft cocktail. 
They also had a delicious food menu. And although it wasn't the most amazing sunset from the rooftop, it was just an absolutely gorgeous view of Lisbon. At Scene, which is a really awesome rooftop bar restaurant that's down the street from our hotel here in Lisbon. We're having dinner and we have our starters. They're already so delicious. Our cocktails are chef's kiss. I would do it with my hands, but they're good. <laughs> Our bags are packed and we are ready to get off to our next stop, Kashkais. Saying it right, I hope. <laughs> hope you all enjoyed uh, our short Lisbon vlog. I definitely think two days or maybe even three would be really ideal time to have here to really get to see everything. We had a little airline delay that kind of snuck into our time here, unfortunately, but plenty of things on my list to see when I come back. I'll drop a couple of those right here. One big landmark that we missed that I don't know how we missed was the Santa Justa lift. I hope I'm saying that right. It's actually right next door to the Carmo convent and I didn't realize it when we were up there. So if I had realized that we would have easily just walked right over. So when you go to see one, check out the other one, plan to do them around the same time as each other. Another area we really didn't get to explore was the area over by the Bellum Tower where we had gotten on the boat tour. This is the Geronimo's Monastery, one of the things that I had on my list that we did not get to simply because it is pretty much outside of the Lisbon city center. So it is a little bit more difficult to get to via public transport than things that are within their sort of subway metro system, but it's supposed to be absolutely stunning. Now this place I've heard has really long lines as well as the Bellum Tower, which is right next door to it practically. So you could do these two things in the same day, though I would suggest head down to the description box of this video. I'll have a link to possibly some skip the line tours where you can see these a little bit more efficiently. I'm all for skipping the line whenever you can on a vacation. Another place that's over here is the original Pastis Donata location where they have the original recipe that is only passed down to a couple masters. So this is where you can get like the real, real Pastis Donata. And then of course, across the river, you can go visit the Christ statue, um, which we saw from our boat tour. But if you wanted to get a little bit more close up look to it, you could take a ferry over there. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. And and uh, I'll see you guys on the next installment of our Portugal adventures. Until then, bye!